So good morning. Thank you to SNP for organizing this event. My name is Devin Meserve. I am the marketing manager at the Global Aquaculture Alliance. The GAA is a global nonprofit membership organization, and we work to promote and advocate for sustainable and responsible aquaculture. Many of you might notice that I am not Dr. Steve Hart, who is supposed to be here today. He was unable to attend, um, so I hope you can bear with me as I go through his presentation and try to fill his shoes. So we've heard a lot already this morning about the importance of aquaculture. And today, we really want to focus on why we need aquaculture to continue to make our food production system sustainable. And you've also heard some of these facts already, but I just want to reiterate some of these ideas. So we know that farming, or farming seafood by aquaculture takes pressure off of wild fisheries. We also know that by 2030, almost two-thirds of seafood that's on our plates is going to come to us via aquaculture. Also, farmed fish is an extremely efficient form of animal protein for us. And lastly, with the global population increasing and we're about to reach 9.6 billion people on the planet by 2050, there's a rising need for an efficient and healthy, sustainable form of protein. So to get some of these um, myths and perceptions out of the way about aquaculture, you may have heard some of these. I'm just going to go through them. So first of all, it's been said that tilapia is worse for you than bacon, when in fact it's actually a, um, a lean protein that is low in fat. Another idea that you might have heard in the news is that salmon are dyed pink to create that color, and that's actually not true. Pigment is added to the feed for the salmon to create that color. And lastly, you'll see up here, there's a um, talk about antibiotic residue in farmed seafood, and this is a legitimate concern. But the FDA has a great system in place to um, test and verify suspected violators of this, um, of, you know, with antibiotic residue. And also certifications like best aquaculture practices can help to add another level of protection. So we've gotten those out of the way. And now I want to talk about knowing where our seafood is coming from. So we want to know where our seafood's coming from. And it's important to note that the US actually imports about 90% of seafood. And a lot of those products are farmed. So on this slide, we have some, we're highlighting a few species. So you can see shrimp, salmon, tilapia, catfish, and mollusks. And you can also see the percentage imported and from which countries they're coming from. And we picked these um, species to highlight because we're really relying on imports for these. And a lot of this seafood is actually coming from Asian countries. So we want to make sure that these products are sustainable and safe that are landing on our plates. So how do we do this? So many um, NGOs have actually taken on this, this topic, this issue of sustainable seafood. And they've done a fantastic job of bringing awareness to the consumer level. But there are some limitations to their ability um, to actually bring about true change. And this is because they are limited in their scope of work. In addition, if we look at the seafood industry um, itself, we can really see the industry kind of moving the sustainability needle. And a great example of that is the salmon industry. So the salmon folks have positioned themselves as leaders, and they've done this by, in sustainability, um, they've done this by largely adopting certification, so that would be through ASC or BAP, and they've also come together to really collaborate. So they've um, organized the GSI, the Global Salmon Initiative. And this is a way to collaborate. Um, even though they're competitors, they're doing this in a pre-competitive space. So even though these efforts are great, the market still requires real verification that the product is sustainable. And the market can't afford to just take the word from NGOs and from industry itself that the product is, is a good one. So third party verification is needed and we need independent auditors who actually go out and verify these claims. 
So to get a little bit deeper into what does certification mean when we come, when we look at aquaculture products. So in certification, auditors actually go out to a location, to a farm, as you see this one here, and they're actually evaluating the practices, and a farm will either pass or fail based on those claims. So the bottom line is certification really requires these farms to improve their practices if they want to enter the marketplace. So you may recognize the BAP label up there at the top. So the Global Aquaculture Alliance administers the Best Aquaculture Practices Program. And it's been widely accepted by the US marketplace because it encompasses four main pillars. And you can see them here on this slide. So not only does BAP look at environmental responsibility, which has been a really big topic of concern, but our standards are actually encompassing food safety, um, social responsibility, and animal health and welfare. And this is happening across the production chain of aquaculture. The Global Aquaculture Alliance was actually founded by people in industry who saw a need to improve sustainability. And this wasn't just desired by the marketplace, this was actually for farming communities um, in parts of the world where they rely on the success of farming for their local economies. And to get a little bit deeper into that formation of the GAA, um, in the late 90s, the Global Aquaculture Alliance was trying to address an issue around um, shrimp farming sustainability in Southeast Asia as it pertained to mangrove deforestation, which was mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, and the GA founders really saw that the way to solve this problem, the only way to solve this problem was in, to, to um, encourage improvements was to start a verification program. So the GA um, not only administers the BAP program, but we also do a lot of other things. So you can see some of these logos up here. Um, we create and deliver a suite of benefits to our membership base and to anyone who really wants to learn more about aquaculture. This is actually the world I live in, so if you have any questions about any of these logos, come see me. Um, we have an online publication called The Advocate, which is putting out um, news articles and technical stories every week about aquaculture. We have an educational arm of our organization, which is creating great content. We have a film initiative going on, um, and we also have our annual goal conference, which is for leadership um, in the aquaculture space. And what am I missing? Oh, my GAA is like a LinkedIn for people who are in aquaculture and want to engage with others in that space as well. So the BAP program is kind of the demonstration arm of the organization. To dive a little bit more into BAP and that program, um, you can see kind of some of the talking points we've set up for our program. It's comprehensive, proven, and trusted. But to note right here, the most important is that we cover the whole entire aquaculture production chain. We are also benchmarked against the three Gs, which I'll talk a little bit more about in the next slide. And we use an SOC, so that is a Standards Oversight Committee, which um, works to develop and set our standards. So the point there is that we don't just define sustainability in this aquaculture for ourselves. We work with experts around the world to do that. So those three Gs I talked about, um, this benchmarking process of our program is really rigorous and it provides evaluation to show that, you know, we're actually doing what we claim that we're doing, that we say we're doing. So we are benchmarked against the Global Sustainable Seafood Initiative, um, the Global Food Safety Initiative, and the Global Social Compliance Program. And just to give you a little more information about how we develop our standards, so we have, um, we work with experts, so we have a technical committee, and we also have this SOC. And um, what's interesting to note is that anytime a new standard is um, added to our program and considered, there need to be two yes votes on the SOC for that to get adopted. So that means the industry can't really force through a standard that makes their job easier. It really has to be approved by the SOC. 
And here is a collage of folks in the marketplace who are endorsing the BAP program. Um, there are about 90% of the marketplace is requiring a third party certification at this point, and the best aquaculture practices program um, is the most widely accepted in North America. So lastly, Steve said to make sure this is a point that I get across to everyone. Um, you know, it's never about choosing wild versus farmed when we talk about seafood. They're both great choices. It's more about knowing, you know, where it comes from, if it's sustainable, and um, just asking the right questions. And we want people, people to be eating more seafood. So thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, even though my world is marketing, I would love to connect you with someone who can answer your question about GAA, BAP, or aquaculture in general. Thank you.